Hello everyone and welcome, I am your host Mark Freeman, you are watching episode 28 of SSTO Space Program in which we are sending an asteroid space station up into space. <laughs> okay, I'm, <laughs> I'll stop fooling around now, I'm going back to my dull robo voice right now. So, as I said, we, we are actually uh, building a space station today because um, you guys actually seem to like uh, space station building videos and we are going to make a space station that will be used to mine an asteroid because, well, it's fun and um, it's something that we haven't done so far. And also, asteroid mining might be a thing in reality very, very soon. So, what can I tell you is that uh, it's not going to be a single launch space station. <laughs> well, surprise, surprise. Uh, the core is going to be a single launch because, well, as you can see, it's um, it has quite a peculiar shape and I, I thought that it's just going to be easier if we launch it um, as a single assembly. Also, from the structural point of view, it's going to be way more sound, structurally sound, than, than if we wanted to assemble that in orbit. But that doesn't mean it's not possible. And um, we could have obviously used our trusty uh, SSTO launch vehicle OCOD2, but uh, I think it's kind of overused at this point. And I um, also wanted to build something new and something that doesn't look like a flying brick. And uh, I must admit that most of my designs actually, uh, well, useful designs actually look like flying bricks. And uh, I would say that it's through no fault of my own. That's how KSP works. So you're kind of limited with the parts that you can um, work with. But nevertheless, I wanted to build something that has this sleek plane uh, look to it and uh, is also quite useful. So we'll be building an SSTO that will have features that you can see right now. So we are aiming for 90 ton payload into orbit uh, with two pseudo stages only. So we'll use rapiers mainly as our propulsion. And um, there's also another thing that I wanted this SSTO to be able to do. And um, that is <laughs> something that I've actually, uh, I think, never talked about. Uh, on my channel at least, is that I wanted to build something that I can fly using my uh, flight gear. Uh, the problem with this is that in KSP it seems that there is a, a really large input lag between uh, the flight the flight controller and um, the planes you're controlling and um, it's very difficult to control them. So you need to have a really reliable plane to be able to do that. So I wanted to build something that will look like a plane, uh, be easy to fly, that's, and also something that would be relatively easy to control using a flight controller. So there it is, meet Apus, <laughs> or uh, I think it's how it should be pronounced, because I wanted to name it after a bird that um, in English is called a common swift, but Let's face it, Common Swift is not exactly a baddest name for SSTOs. And I like naming my SSTOs after birds or classical deities, but... Uh, so yeah, so Common Swift, not really, but its Latin name, Apus, is a little bit more like, you know... It sounds, sounds cooler, so I start with Apus. And this is me flying it. As you can see, it's completely 100% uh, tested. Uh, for Cytec X52 Pro, so <laughs> if you want to download the craft and fly it yourself This one is actually certified for use with flight controller. I wouldn't recommend doing that with my other SSTOs. Disasters are bound to happen, so <laughs> As I said, the core of the station has been launched already using an SSTO rocket and um, all the remaining modules will be launched using this um, quite successful plane, I must say, and um, there's quite a lot of them, of those modules that we'll need to send um, up into orbit and um, dock to our space station. So many, in fact, that I don't think we'll be able to finish building this station uh, in this video, because, um, hmm, how can I put this? I wanted to share the fun with you, and this turned out to be quite a large project, actually larger than I expected. And uh, yeah, we'll have a couple of converters to convert all that uh, ore that we'll be mining from the asteroid, plus some, you know, communication dishes and towers, plus some habitation units, because, well, we cannot expect really our Kerbals to be uh, resupplied easily uh, when out there. 
And you might be wondering how we are going to assemble all of those modules. And for that, I made an orbital uti utility vehicle called Little B, as you could see. And uh, <laughs> it's actually quite useful. Again, I like orbital utility vehicles almost as much as I like SSTOs. And uh, this one kind of looks like a bee, I think. So, so yes, yeah, so we, we were using <laughs> Little B to assemble all the modules. Um, uh, of our station. Uh, it turned out that with a little use of Infernal Robotics I was able to make it work, so it's it was quite a successful vehicle. With all the monopropellant and um, RCS system kind of spaced in such a way that uh, it has two modes of two modes of operation, let's call it that way. One when it is carrying a payload and the other one it's not. Um, actually the one without the payload turned out to be to be pretty failed so so it's working better only with uh, <laughs> with, with those uh, legs arms or I don't know how we can call that extended but the good thing about this is that it is actually able to carry a one orange tank without much trouble actually you you have pretty good level uh, of control and as you could see I had some problems um, grabbing those uh, ISRU converters because for some reason um, it's not possible to attach anything to them uh, on their sides. I don't know if I was docking incorrectly or what was the problem. They don't have surface attachment uh, feature enabled uh, actually. This is something that I've learned which is quite confusing actually because the small ones do but the large ones don't. And maybe this is why you cannot attach anything to them even the grabbing unit but but I couldn't. Um, anyway, as you can see, uh, Little B was quite successful in docking all of the modules together. And uh, <laughs> and with the converters attached, now it's time for um, the COM network. And yeah, there, there will be quite a couple of launches more that we'll cover in this, in this video. Um, this part here was mainly the utility. We have four drills on this station, plus some engines actually to get us to that asteroid. Uh, we'll have, uh, I think, five habitation modules plus some curbitats that are uh, part of the MKS mod that are incorporated already in the station, plus research lab, plus some, you know, recyclers and what on, and um, some agroponics, agroponics unit as well. Um, so, so yeah, so we'll be launching and landing our uh, SSTO a couple of more times, uh, and maybe instead of running you through all of that. I would like to, or I should talk a little bit more about what the station will do, uh, where we'll send it, uh, a little bit of plot twist actually that uh, turned out to to be the case during the making of that video, and um, previous yet failed iteration of that station that uh, didn't make it into the video, but I still would like to talk about it because, because I think it's interesting. And our story as Almost everything on this channel begins with mods, or actually one mod in particular called Asteroid Recycling Technologies, which is a mod by Rover Dude that makes a part of his um, mod suite that is linked to MKS, as you might know. And uh, I was initially very excited about this mod because it adds a bunch of new parts and a bunch of new ways to use asteroids. Um, it allows you as well to build bases on asteroids and more importantly it allows you to build bases that are not on the surface of an asteroid but actually inside so you can actually drill into an asteroid and make a storage unit or a habitation unit inside an asteroid but there were some problems as well as you might imagine and uh, one of the major problems uh, was that MKS by itself is not exactly easy or well explained and uh, asteroid recycling technologies not only adds an extra layer of difficulty by introducing extra resource from which you can technically or if I understand correctly you could technically derive all the other resources that you will then process with uh, standard MKS processing facilities but also it gives you absolutely no description of the parts that you're using. So you have a bunch of new converters um, that you have no idea how to use. So I couldn't figure it out. And uh, when I tried, um, 
I just couldn't keep the station in a somewhat sane size, so 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 I must say that I gave up. I'm sorry. Uh, the station had very similar layout to the station you see right here. Just had less uh, hub space and more like, you know, industrial processing capabilities, I would say. But the problem with that is that um, asteroid recycling technologies actually give you one extra resource that is rock. We actually have a rock container on that station for that very purpose. You're supposed to mine that rock uh, from the asteroid as well as stock ore. Uh, from that rock you are able to uh, make all the other resources somehow. I couldn't figure out how exactly and uh, in what direction or using what path because you have multiple paths in MKS from which you can get different types of resources and I just it, it was it was really complicated really messy and um, yeah that the station didn't want to be small either so that was kind of like a like a difficulty that I've encountered because my idea was that we make an asteroid space station that is not only relatively self-sufficient in terms of say supplies production but also is able to make uh, to mine some useful minerals like I don't know whatever has the highest price tag on it at MKS and but that didn't work anyway we ended up with an asteroid space station that is going to mine ore and be a uh, fuel storage so in this video we will be sending the hub and recycling units only to the station and in this next video in this series we will be sending fuel tanks that will be used not only to get to the asteroid but also refuel it uh, the station i mean not the asteroid um, also another intro i mean i still have the um, asteroid recycling technologies mod installed and we will be sending some experimental craft later on to to try out some of the new parts to maybe get a grasp of, of what is happening and how to use those but another interesting change that this mod is introducing is that it actually makes asteroids quite a bit heavier. And um, by quite a bit, I mean um, it's not uncommon to find an asteroid that will weigh 100,000 tons, which is, I don't know how many times heavier than stock asteroids used to be, but I remember from one of my asteroid videos that I've done in stock KSP, those were anywhere between couple hundred to couple thousand tons um, 95,000 the one that I've been testing this with <laughs> is quite a bit heavier to the point where actually moving that asteroid anywhere is near impossible and, um, and that wasn't even the E-class asteroid that was something like C or maybe D so I was thinking you know if we can't move this thing ever or in any reliable way what we'll do is instead we'll find the biggest asteroid possible because they are also bigger right now and we'll dock that station to that asteroid for really cool looks so this will be all for today and we will finish building the station in the next video and we will also send it to an asteroid in the next video and we'll also send an experimental smaller craft that will use some of that sweet technologies that is kind of mysterious from asteroid recycling technologies and uh, I know that you're dying to see how the station looks like when it's finished so I'll give you a little sneak peek at the end of this video and with this I would like to thank you very much for watching I hope that you've enjoyed I would also like to thank Luke Sharax, Joe Luffin and all my patrons on Patreon who are amazing and thanks to them you will be getting an extra video this week maybe not about KSP but still something cool I'll promise you that my name is Mark from and I will see you next time.